Just like carbonyl compounds, nitrile compounds, also known as cyanides, have resin stabilized structures and basically can act as Lewis acids and Lewis bases. So let's begin by discussing the structure of a nitrile compound. So basically we have a carbon at the center. On one side we have a triple bond with a nitrogen that contains a lone pair of electrons. To the other side of the carbon we have a single bond between a carbon a carbon so we have a methyl group now nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon so that means it will pull away the electron density away from the carbon and towards our nitrogen so that means that the other resin stabilized structure will look something like this because nitrogen is more electronegative it pulls away the second pi bond from this midsection and places it onto that nitrogen. So we place a full negative charge on the nitrogen and a full positive charge on the carbon. Now, of course, the actual structure of our nitrile is neither this one nor is it this one. It's somewhere in between. And so that implies that our carbon has a partial positive charge, our nitrogen contains a partial negative charge, and we have an electric dipole moment that begins on the carbon points towards our nitrogen. Now, the carbon is the focus of Lewis acidity on the nitrile. It's the carbon that acts as the Lewis acid because it contains the positive charge, the open 2p orbital. On the other hand, it's the nitrogen that is the center, the focus of basicity, of Lewis basicity because it's the nitrogen that contains the lone pair of electrons that can grab some other atom or molecule. So the carbon bears a positive charge and can therefore act as the Lewis acid. So if we have a nuclear file and we react it, we react the nuclear file with the nitrile, it's the carbon that will react with our nuclear file and not the nitrogen. So the nitrogen bearing the electrons and a negative charge can act as the Lewis base. Now, the question is, how good of a Lewis base are nitrile molecules? To answer this question, we have to examine how likely is it that these two electrons on the nitrogen will interact with some other atom. So basically, we have to examine the type of orbital in which these two electrons are found in. Remember, the more S character we have in a given orbital, the closer the electrons are to the nucleus of the atom and the more difficult it is to pull those electrons away. This nitrogen is sp hybridized so it means it contains 50% S character and that is a lot of S character. So that means this will be a relatively weak Lewis base because these two electrons are found in an sp hybridized orbital because we have one sigma bond and one lone pair of electrons so it's sp hybridized. So nitriles make weak bases because the nitrogen is sp hybridized. That is, it contains 50% s character which tends to pull the electrons closer to the nucleus and that means it's more difficult to pull those electrons away so that they can interact with some other atom. Now, not only can our nitrile compounds act as Lewis acids, they can also act as Bronsted Lowry acids. And that's because just like carbonyl compounds, they also have an acidic hydrogen atom. So this is this H atom here. So if we can imagine that a base pulls away this H atom, leaving these two electrons on the carbon, we have resin stabilization. So we have the delocalization of negative charge between this electropositive carbon and this electronegative nitrogen atom. So the pKa of nitriles is usually about 24, so that makes them somewhat acidic. So if we have a strong base, that strong base will be able to pull away those H atoms. 
So we can see that the properties of our nitrile compounds are very similar to the properties of carbonyl compounds and carboxylic acids. So that implies that nitriles react in many similar ways to carbonyl compounds and to carboxylic acids. And the reaction that we're going to focus on in this lecture is the base induced hydrolysis of nitrile compounds. So basically in the same way that we can take our carboxylic acid and transform or we can take an ester molecule and transform it into a carboxylic acid, we can take our nitrile compound and transform it into a carboxylic acid. So let's look at the reaction mechanism. So in step number one, we have our nitrile compound that reacts with the nucleophile because we're in base, the nucleophile is hydroxide. So this carbon is the focus of Lewis acidity. So, they, uh, so this oxygen forms a, uh, a, bi, a, um, a sigma bond between the oxygen and carbon and we form this molecule here on which we have a negative charge on the electronegative nitrogen atom. So to remove the negative charge in step number two, a water that is in close proximity protonates our nitrogen forming this molecule here. And in step number three, a hydroxide that is formed in step two when water is deprotonated basically takes away, deprotonates this H atom off of this molecule forming a resin stabilized structure on which we have the delocalization of negative charge between this oxygen and this nitrogen atom. Now in step number four we basically protonate this nitrogen so that we place two H atoms onto our nitrogen and we have a double bond on our or between our oxygen and our carbon. So we basically in one, two, three, and four in four steps we go from the nitrile to an amide and now the amide can undergo the hydrolysis reaction. So now our carbon on the amide acts as the Lewis acid. This is our nucleophile Lewis base. So we form a bond, kicking off the pi bond, forming the tetrahedral intermediate. Now in the next step, because we're under basic conditions, the pi bond is reformed and now this molecule is kicked off. So once this molecule is kicked off, we form the carboxylic acid, but because we're in base and because this is such a strong uh, Lewis base, we see that this deprotonates the H and we form this carboxylate ion. And in the final step, in step number eight, we add some, t uh, we add some type of acid into our mixture, such as hydronium, and the hydronium basically acts to protonate this carboxylate ion and we form our carboxylic acid as well as the water. So we see that because our nitriles react in very similar ways as our carbonyl compounds, the same type of reactions can exist with, with the nitriles as with our acyl compounds that contain our carbon-oxygen double bond. And so our nitrile can be transformed into a carboxylic acid under base-induced hydrolysis.